All right, so we're going to talk about IP portability, or we're going to talk about network virtualization. And what do we mean by network virtualization? So Mike talked about that, uh, you know, we, we saw the onset of virtualization and being able to abstract the hardware layer. And we, we're all, we all know about that, the ability to virtualize the CPU and GPU and memory. And in Windows Server 2012, we, we, we looked at how do we take that further? How do we make this entire elastic infrastructure? We looked at virtualizing the storage with a technology we call storage spaces, which we have a, a lot of sessions on at uh, TechEd. And then we looked at virtualizing the network layer. And virtualizing the network layer gives us incredible flexibility and elasticity in um, uh, joining our um, data center into service providers, but also providing a lot of flexibility in our own data center around IP portability and multi-tenancy. And it's really important in, in the, uh, for a service provider and many of our organizations to create multi-tenant and isolated and secured um, environments for divisions and for customers. So I'm going to show you some great thing, new things with uh, network virtualization and ways that you can use it. Now, why is IP portability important for me? Well, we've all got one box that's sitting in the corner that's got a hard IP address, that we have an application that is hitting that IP address. And the, the issue when we talk about IP portability is every time I change subnets or I go across VLANs or I go across a geographical boundary or into a hoster, I'm defined by the destination IP range. I have to change my infrastructure to that IP range. And that can cause me problems, cause me issues. So with network virtualization, we've solved that problem. So what I'm showing you here is um, a virtual machine manager, vNext, which is our next version of virtual machine manager running on Windows Server 2012. And I've got two sites. You can see here, I've got my wingtip network. And I've got a New York site and a Seattle site. I can quickly look at that. And you'll see um, underneath here, I'm running a couple of different subnets. So on my Seattle network, I'm running a 172.16 subnet. And on my New York network, I'm running a 172.17 subnet. So these are two separate subnets in my organization. Now, if I go and look at my uh, virtual machine, oh, if I go and look at my virtual machine infrastructure, you can see in my New York office, I'm running both a co-host server one, which is a multi-tenant environment. Because we can run a secure multi-tenancy, I'm running both my infrastructure services to support my infrastructure, and I'm running this customer server or this division server, which is fully isolated utilizing network virtualization. If I look at my Seattle office, you can see I'm running a Coho Server 3. Two different servers sitting in two different offices on two different subnets. And the great thing here is if I go and actually have a look at the IP address range of each of these servers, I'm just going to run a really quick script here what this will do is it will bring back a couple of really interesting things to look at. One, you can see here on the top one, I'm running it on the local server. This is in my Seattle office. Host three is my New York office. What you're seeing here is the address of one of the co-host servers, co-host server one, is 10.2.1.4. The other address is 10.2.1.9. They are in exactly the same subnet. They can actually talk to each other. They can ping each other. In fact, if you have a look, this is the server, my co-host server here. We can have a look at his IP address. That's that 10.2.1.9. And he can happily ping across the network. So even though I've got two different subnets across two, di you know, across two different sites, these um, servers look and feel like they're in the same subnet. But underneath the, uh, underneath the, uh, the covers here, what you're looking at is these have provider addresses. So these actually have these physical addresses that are associated in each of those subnets and utilizing network virtualization that's invisible to this infrastructure, it's invisible to these virtual machines. So this provides me that great multi-tenant isolation, that great network virtualization. But it doesn't stop there. I can actually do some really powerful things. For example, if I go back to my VMN here, I'm going to take my co-host server 3 and I'm going to live migrate that across um, into the other subnet. So I'm just going to migrate this virtual machine. And what virtual machine manager is doing now is it's looking at my environment. I'm going to choose to look at all my hosts, not just the Seattle hosts. And you can see here, here's my Windows Server 12 host 2, which is sitting in my New York office. Make it a little bit bigger. I'm just going to click through here. Um, the great thing here is that all this stuff is built on PowerShell. So everything I'm doing in System Center is actually exporting, utilizing a PowerShell script. And I can export these PowerShell scripts to run this time and time again. 
With PowerShell, then I can orchestrate it and I can automate it. So it's a very, very powerful solution. I can take this information, I'm going to hit the move button. So what will happen as we talk is this will actually live migrate from one server to the other. It should happen fairly quickly. We're on a fairly fast network here. The great thing is that while we're live migrating, utilize, utilizing um, our new Windows Server 2012 live migration components, um, my customer or my division or um, my organization that's uh, us utilizing the server will never know. They're going to be able to access it. It's always up. It's always on during our live migration techniques. So that's basically done now. We'll actually see that sitting in our New York office. Now, if we go back to this PowerShell script that we showed you before, you can see some great things here. So if I can go and um, look at this one, you can see no provider addresses here. But again, if I look at this one, you can see now it's picked up the sub new subnet provider address, but it's kept its customer IP address. So I've got the ability to move virtual machines across subnet boundaries, um, uh, keeping its own IP address, providing IP portability. I can use this in my organization. I can use this across the cloud with a service provider. The great thing here is we're not limited by VLANs, and v network virtualization provides me a lot of elasticity for all my networks and uh, all my customers out there. Thank you very much.